All right, so we're going to talk about fat burning foods. So there are actually two sets of hormones. Those are hormones that trigger fat burning, and then there are hormones that trigger fat storing. And this principle really comes into play as you age uh, because when you're young, you have a good metabolism, you can pretty much get away with anything. But when, as you age, you have to consider the hormones. So we want to kind of go away from the calorie counting and focus more on how foods influence the hormone effects. So I'm going to just cover some real key points here. Number one, protein, all right? If you have the right amount of protein, which is three to four ounces per meal, okay, you will trigger the fat burning process. That's why skipping a meal, especially for breakfast, is not a good thing because you're not triggering any fat burning. You're actually starving your body. You're, you're creating a starvation reflex and it'll actually cause more fat storing. So one of the triggering effects of fat storing hormones is starvation or going on a diet or being hungry because you're not eating correctly. That's why I think people will say sometimes like, oh yeah, you have to eat like seven meals a day or you have to keep eating more. I'm, gain I'm actually gaining weight because I'm not eating enough. Well, that may or may not be true. It really has to do with, are you eating enough nutrients in the calories? Because, but we don't want to basically be starving your body. All right, so what, you want a small amount of protein, anything excess, like let's say uh, 10, uh, or even maybe sometimes even 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, up to 17 ounces of protein per meal. You go to this uh, restaurant and they have all this, this protein. That can trigger the fat storing hormones and prevent any chance for weight loss. So just because protein triggers fat burning doesn't mean you can have a lot of it. Now the quality is important too because if you start doing like the soy protein isolate powders or which is in a lot of the diet prepackaged foods, that's not high quality. It may trigger the fat storing but it comes with a package. It has a lot of side effects. It might create tumors in the liver. It might make you look old as you lose weight. It's not the best quality to replace your body tissue so I don't recommend it. In fact, I don't re recommend a lot of protein powders that are with the whey or the soy. Uh, egg protein, pea protein, any of the vegetarian protein powders are better, but I'd prefer if you have actual food. And then we're going to get into this thing called fats here. F fat, believe it or not, even though it has more calories, it's neutral when it comes down to the fat storing or fat burning. In other words, having butter, for example, won't necessarily just turn into your hips or stomach weight. Um, it's neutral. However, when you have certain fats like uh, greasy, deep fried foods, that grease can affect your liver and block the fat burning process because all the fat burning hormones work through the liver. So even though it's an indirect effect, you need a healthy liver to burn fat. Okay, so we don't want to clog up the liver with too much fat. But some neutral, healthy fats are totally fine. Coconut oil, and I'm not saying go out of your way to eat them, but don't worry about avoiding them. Butter is not a bad thing. Safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, all that is totally fine. But the problem is like doing the fast food fats that they would do in the big vats where you have hydrogenated oils and all this corn oil and things like that. Okay, so now we got the carbs, all right? Now this is interesting because in one of the premier um, physiology books in all uh, medical schools and uh, uh, chiropractic colleges is called Guyton's Physiology. And this book is like the Bible of physiology. And it states that one of the most powerful triggers of fat burning hormones is the absence of carbohydrates. So it's not something you do, it's something that you avoid which is kind of like something you're doing, you're avoiding it, but you're not really eating anything, you're just not eating something. And that would be the carbs, and I'm talking about the sugar, refined carbohydrates, and refined grains. So let's just talk about that. Like the hidden things, like, like juice or flavored yogurt, um, that would be hidden, or alcohol, those are hidden carbs. And the philosophy of everything in moderation or portion control doesn't play into this because all it takes is a tiny amount of a carbohydrate to block fat burning. And you might not know this now, but you, unless you watch my videos, but let's pretend that you had a cookie, okay? It's 80 calories. You could walk it off in about one mile of walking, but the insulin response in that one cookie, if your metabolism is slow and you're getting older, could inhibit fat burning hormones by up to 72 hours. 
So all it takes is tiny amounts. And the reason I mention that is because sometimes I'll have people who say, well, boy, I can't, I don't, I don't understand all these fat people. They're so big. It's so simple. All you have to eat, all you have to do is portion control and exercise more and they would lose weight. They're just lazy. That's absolutely not true. They don't know the, this little piece of information right here. So, and when you take a carb and you add protein, it really spikes the fat storing hormones. So like if you had a hamburger or a, a sweetened sour pork at the Chinese restaurant or, or a, like some type of protein with bread or sugar, that is worse combined than having them separate. So it creates more of an effect on the fat storing hormones. Um, that usually comes to play when you're going out to dinner. Now, MSG, monosodium glutamate, that would be hidden as modified food starch. That's a flavor enhancer. That also will spike insulin by 300%. It's uh, in a lot of uh, junk foods to make the food taste better than it really is. This is a deadly fat storing uh, uh, substance because it acts like sugar almost, I mean, even worse than sugar because it creates a, a spike about 300% more than sugar. So MSG is pretty deadly if you're trying to lose weight. Now fruits. Fruit doesn't necessarily cause you to gain weight because of the fiber buffering effect. But if, if your metabolism is slow and really slow, the less fruit that you can eat. What I would recommend is try not to eat a lot of it, but hit your goal and then add the fruit in to maintain your weight. So fiber does buffer the insulin response so that means instead of juicing, blend food so you have all the fiber. It's very, very important. Okay, so then we have stress. Stress does trigger the fat storing hormones. Now, if your metabolism is slow and you're burnt out and you're not sleeping, you should not be doing high ex intense exercise because you're not gonna be able to recover from it. So low recovery, no sleep, high exercise, you're gonna get fat, all right? Now, the best sleep, best exercise to do when you're under stress or you're not sleeping is low intense exercise because you will burn more fat than high intensity depending on your recovery and your sleep. But sleep in general does help you trigger the fat burning effects. Okay, so sleep is one of the triggers and intense exercise is also one of the triggers if you're sleeping, if you are recovering. Okay, so the exercise thing is uh, dependent on your overall health and your metabolism. So what I did is I actually combined I actually combined all the hormone triggers for the fat burning and all the fat storing triggers hormone triggers for the fat storing effects right here on one piece of paper. I summarized everything to make it simple. So you can download this form in the link below and then read it, study it, apply it, memorize it, um, and then send me your success stories because this really does work if you follow it. Hope you enjoy this. I will see you in the next video.